Hello guys, welcome to Little Officers. Welcome to another series, another video in the series of concepts and terminology. In this particular video, I am going to discuss about coastal regulation zones, which is a very very important topic for the mains examination and even for the administration. This is a very important topic which we have to have an understanding about. So in this particular video, I am going to discuss about what are coastal zones and how they are being regulated, what section of Environmental Protection Act is taking care of it and how they have been classified and the latest rules, latest notification of the government, how it has modified those guidelines. Shall we look at it? Okay. So let us begin with this. See India being a peninsular country, we have 7500 kilometers of coastline including the islands and entire coastal line. Now if you have such a long coastline then obviously the regions which are in the coastal uh, coastal areas they are very sensitive okay, and they are also prone to lot of disasters it may be cyclone or it may be tsunami or it may be flood so on and so forth. Okay, As a result of it in these areas with respect to development we have to take certain measures. For taking these measures, government has given, it has come up with coastal regulation zones or coastal zones regulation notifications. Often, the government has introduced it in 1991 using Environmental Protection Act under Section 5 of it. So, through this section, the coastal zones have been regulated, CRZs have been included. Now, in here, first let us see how they have been classified, okay, and later how the new latest notification has changed the definitions, okay. So, first, what is a coastal regulation zone? See, these are areas along the coastal line, okay, in which development of buildings, tourism, infrastructure and other facilities are regulated by the government so that we can have sustainable development. Okay, So those areas we are going to talk about. Now for this purpose the government has classified them into mainly four types. Okay, So they are simply demarcated as CRZ1, Coastal Regulation Zone 1, Okay, Zone 2, zone 3 and zone 4. Now there is a criteria for each of these zones. Let us look at the criteria initially. So 2011 was the first notification which came. Then 2018 some modification have been made to these regulation zones. First let us look at the 2011 one then modifications. So according to 2011 one it has been divided into 4 zones coastal regulation zone 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now according to that notification, zone 1 is that area which is falling between intertidal region. So now what is intertidal region? See when we get a tide, I will discuss about tide in separate video. Take it. Tide is simply the vertical movement of the water, up and down movement of the water. It happens because of the gravitational pull of certain celestial bodies like moon and sun and so. That's why these tides are going to happen on the earth. Now when there is a tide, these tides are of two types. They, they are like high tide and low tide. Okay. So high tide when it is rising of the air and as a result it, the air may reach up to this location. Let us say. And when there is a receding of it, we call generally that as low tide. So, us time, what will be the level of the water? Suppose this is the level. Now, whatever the zone which is there in between this high tide line and low tide line, this is called coastal regulation zone 1. Okay. And apart from this, whatever the eco-sensitive areas that are present nearby to these coastal areas, they are also classified as coastal regulation zone 1. So that's why there is like two categories under CRZ1, category A and category B. Okay. 
the same has been forwarded to 2018 notification as well now coming to the second coastal regulation zone now within this coastal line okay let me draw it here within this coastal line along this there is a line called shore line okay shore line that means it is the line from where like uh, the ocean and the land which are meeting that particular line we call it as shore line from there towards the land towards the interland whatever the area that is nearby to it and in which urban settlements have been developed that particular area we call it as crz2 it falls under second category now please remember we are talking about only urban settlements here now whatever that are not there either in the one or in the second category they are going to be fall in the category 3 okay let me draw it here category 3 so all the areas excluding these urban areas excluding this category 1 whatever the areas that are there they are going to be falling in the coastal regulation zone category 3 okay now what is fourth four is from the low tide line matlab jab low tide hoga pani ka what is the boundary of it waha se lekar india ka jo territorial waters hai theek hai territorial waters matlab jahan tak india ka sovereign rights hote hain usko bolte hain territorial waters and generally it is 12 nautical miles from the uh, shore line that we generally take it now from this low tide line to this 12 nautical miles stretch mark so till there whatever the area that is falling whatever the water bodies that are there or the water bodies where there is a tidal action all of them they are falling under category 4 is that clear i am going to quickly sum up in one minute category 1 this is the location which is falling between the high tide line and low tide line so intertidal region plus eco sensitive areas in the coastal regions then second category 2 that is what in these areas along the shoreline if there is any urban settlement that is going to be falling here category 3 so it is from the high tide line towards the hinterland till 500 meters so whatever the land in which apart from this first category second category if you are omitting them whatever the areas that are there they are going to be falling under what category 3 then fourth is completely water body from the low tide line towards the territorial lines the mark of the territorial lines of any particular country uh, i'm talking about india here so let us focus on india so till that point this zone we are going to call it as category 4 is that clear now this was earlier definition now in 2018 the government has given a new notification in this notification it has been criticized there was some dilution of these regulations particularly with respect to third category rest of the categories almost all similar they have not been diluted but with respect to the third category it has been diluted a little bit let us look at them i have given it here in the index the CRZ1 category A is eco sensitive areas. For example, here I have given the area where there is eco sensitivity, diversity, etc. Then, second is uh, B category is intertidal region between high tide line and low tide line. Then, second category is urban areas which are close to urban developed areas which are close to the shoreline. Category 3 this is where a lot of dilution has happened in 2018 notification in which it has been divided into again two categories category a and b now what is category a under third it is all that area where the population density is more than 2161 persons per square kilometer as per the 2011 census so itne log se density hai population density hai Par jitne bhi locations hai, all of them are going to be falling under category 3 class A and similarly less than 2161 people per square kilometer with a population density hai, then that area has been demarcated as CRZ3 but B B category okay so this is the dilution and here 
द डेवलपमेंटल जोन लाइक जनरली यहां पर डिफाइन करते हैं कि कहां तक डेवलपमेंट कर सकते हैं कौन सा एक्टिविटी एक्टिविटीज अलाउड है कौन सा नहीं है जनरली कैटेगरी वन में ह्यूमन सेटलमेंट आर नॉट अलाउड टू में दे मे बी अलाउड न्यू कंस्ट्रक्शन मे बी अलाउड बट इट हैज टू बी टूवर्ड्स दी लैंड नॉट टूवर्ड्स दी ओशन थ्री में इन दीज टू कैटेगरीज जनरली कैटेगरी बी जो है जहां पर पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी कम है ओके सो वहां पर वट इज दी नो डेवलपमेंटल जोन जहां पर एक्स्ट्रा कंस्ट्रक्शन जो है नया कंस्ट्रक्शन जो है वो नहीं मानते हैं दैट इज अप टू वॉट लिमिट हियर इफ यू सी कैटेगरी बी सीआरजेड कैटेगरी बी हियर द नो डेवलपमेंटल जोन इज अप टू टू हंड्रेड मीटर्स फ्रॉम दी हाई टाइड लाइन वेर एज कमिंग टू द कैटेगरी ये वेर द पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी इज मोर देन मोर देन 2161 people per square kilometer here the no development zone has been reduced to only 50 meters so this is where the contention has happened they said that it is going to be encroaching into the coastal areas so that is where the government has been criticized apart from that rest of the things have been forwarded in the similar manner okay then coming to this crz4 i already told you this is all that oceanic bodies water bodies where there is like territorial waters plus water bodies in which the tidal action is there tidal wave action is there so all those things are going to be here and here no new construction will be allowed but the traditional method of fishing will be allowed matlab yahan par fishing communities fishing kar sakte hain but traditional manner अगर मैकेनाइज मैनर में करना है देन दे हैव टू टेक द परमिशन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द कोस्टल रेगुलेशन जोन्स आई होप यू हैव लाइक दिस वीडियो द कंटेंट एंड इफ इट इज सो डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल एंड हेल्पर्स रीच आउट टू अदर एस्पिरेंट्स थैंक यू वेरी मच